الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد وهنا وكتاب شرح عقيدة الواسطية لشيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية رحمه الله We were at the point where the Sheikh رحمه الله he said لأنه سبحانه لا سمي له ولا كفوء له ولا ند له ولا يقاس بخلقه سبحانه وتعالى فإنه سبحانه أعلم بنفسه وبغيره وأصدق قيلا وأحسن حديثا من خلقه The Sheikh said لأنه لأنه هي إذا تعليل It's a تعليل تعليل for what? لما سبق تعليل is reasoning The Sheikh is given a reason why he Allah تبارك وتعالى he has no كيفية or we, or we can't do تكييف of him because he previously said ولا يكيفون ولا يمثلون صفاتي بصفات خلقه that the people of أهل السنة they do not do تكييف they do not do تمثيل of Allah تبارك وتعالى's characteristics with the characteristics of the creation. We took that previously. So the reason why they don't do takif and the reason why they don't do tamthil of Allah's characteristics to the characteristics of the creation, the reason is, so this is the illah, this is the reason, لِأَنَّهُ subhana, Because he subhana, subhana is a mazdar, is a verbal noun. It's like the word ghufran. It's a similar, to, it's like the word ghufran. And it comes from the word من التسبيح. It comes from tasbih. And tasbih means هو التنزيه. It is to exalt. It is to exalt. So the sheikh said لأنه سبحانه because he Allah سبحانه وتعالى لا سمي له. He has no سمي. سمي means لا نظير له. There is nothing equal to him. يستحق مثل اسمه. That deserves and has the rights of the likes of Allah's name subhanahu wa ta'ala. As he said in the Quran in ayah 65, Surah Maryam, هَلْ تَعْلَمُوا لَهُ سَمِيًّا And this is it's called the istifham. It's an istifham inkari. It's called a istifham inkari. Allah is trying to, istifham inkari means when you're try, you ask, a question, but you're really negating something. Okay, it's called istifham. Inkari. It's when you ask a question and you're rejecting it. You're rejecting the, the, the validity or, huh, of this question itself. Okay? And Allah is saying this, هَلْ تَعْلَمُ لَهُ سَمِيًّا Do you know anyone like Allah? It is trying to say, no, you don't, and there isn't. Okay? So it's a istifham. And it's ma'an al-nafi, but the, it's a question, but the meaning is a negation. أي لا أحد يساميه أو يماثله There's nothing like him or equal to him. Then the shaykh went on to say, وَلَا كُفْأَ لَهُ The word kuf, there is nothing that resembles him. As he subhanahu wa ta'ala said, or there's nothing that is, that can be placed on the same level as him. There is no partner which he subhanahu wa ta'ala that fulfills him is not there. وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ كُفُوًا كُفُوًا أَحَدْ And it's word used in the ayah Surah Al-Ikhlas. It's that same word that was used in Surah Al-Ikhlas. وَلَا نِدَّ لَهُ And the Shaykh said, Allah doesn't also have a nid. A nid is what? شَبِيه وَنَظِيرٌ Something that resembles him. So all these words are similar and close in meaning. As he subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said in Surah, uh, surah Al-Baqarah, فَلَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادًا Do not make for Allah a nid. Don't make it for him. So those three are negated from him. لَا سَمِيَّ لَهُ وَلَا كُفُؤَ لَهُ وَلَا نِدَّ لَهُ And those are the reasons why the Ahlul Sunnah, they don't do takif or tamthil for Allah Taala's characteristics. Because there's no sami. 
There is no kufu and there's no need. We do not take an analogy from his creation to know him. We don't do that. The word qiyas in the language, in the Arabic language, it means a tamthil. Tamthil. It means raddu shay'i la nadhirihi. It's by you trying to look at something and what you've seen in this particular thing, you are trying to give it to something else. It's an analogy. Okay? We can't do that for his subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we're not allowed to resemble him to his creation. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah negated that concept of doing qiyas of him. Because he said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَلَا تَضْرِبُوا لِلَّهِ الْأَمْثَالِ Do not place for Allah any parables. So he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can't do qiyas, subhanahu wa ta'ala, by, through his creation. You can't do that. Because he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in his existence, he's not like them. He's not like them in his names and his attributes. He's also not like them in his actions. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what is not allowed to, huh? he's not allowed to do a qiyas from the creation to know the creator. Why isn't that allowed? Because the creation are deficient. And the creator is complete. And so on that basis, on that basis, it is not permissible for the person to do it. And Ahlul Sunnah don't do that. And it is not from the aqidah to do qiyas of Allah, to do qiyas of Allah, to qiyas of the creation to know Allah. Then the Sheikh went on to say, فَإِنَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ أَعْلَمُ بِنَفْسِهِ وَبِغَيْرِهِ The Sheikh said, فَإِنَّهُ هِي Allah is more aware of and has more knowledge of himself and other than himself. Allah, he knows himself better then anyone can know him. And he knows his creation more than they can know themselves. He knows them more. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why is the shaykh saying that to us? Why is he telling us that Allah is one who knows himself more than anyone and that he knows his creation more than themselves? Is so that when Allah affirms their characteristics for himself, that we the creation should just submit and accept because he knows himself better than we know him. Okay? And when he negates from himself a characteristics, then we also negate that characteristics for him because he knows himself better than we know him. And when he affirms a characteristics for us, that we affirm that characteristics for ourselves because he knows us more than we know ourselves. And that if he negates a characteristics from us, we also accept that from him because he knows us more than we know ourselves. We are not those who have encompassed Allah in knowledge. وَالْخَلْقُ لَا يُحِيطُونَ بِهِ عِلْمًا We have not encompassed Allah in knowledge. I mean, we can't know him from all the ins and the outs. We can't know of him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah's characteristics are so complete and they're so perfect that a person... His mind cannot come to comprehend it. So we should be pleased for Allah that which He is pleased for Himself. We should be pleased for Allah that which He is pleased for Himself. Because He knows what is befitting for Him. And we don't. We might think to ourselves sometimes, we might assume and think that by us affirming these characteristics for Allah that we're probably making it complete. Or that we're trying to huh, praise him by giving him these characteristics. But he hasn't affirmed it for himself. So we should only be pleased with that which he affirmed for himself. We also should negate our characteristics for him. Thinking to ourselves that by negating these characteristics from him, that we're actually bringing out his perfection, or that we're trying to honor him. 
Because if he hasn't negated it from himself, then however much you may not see that characteristics to be perfect or whatever, the issue isn't what you affirmed or negate. It's what he has said about himself. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the shaykh went on to say, in, and he, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, azdaqu qilan wa ahsanu hadithan min khalqi. The Sheikh said, Allah is the most truthful, Allah is azdaq, the most truthful one in terms of speech. وَأَحْسَنُ حَدِيثًا And he has the best of speech from his creation. Everything Allah has informed us of, everything that Allah has informed us of is truthful. It's true. We believe in it with unwavering conviction. And we all have to believe in it. We have no choice except to believe it. We don't oppose it. We don't oppose it. Also, his wordings that he uses, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the way he speaks, is the greatest and the best way to speak. And it's the most eloquent. And it's the most clearest. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now what we need to know is Allah has in the Quran akhbar and ahkam. The Quran is hukum, rulings, and there is akhbar, information, news. The khabar, the akhbar, the news that we find in the Quran are all truthful. They're all true. The akhbar that are in the Qur'an, all of them are true. And the ahkam in the Qur'an, all of them are just. Every hukum Allah has passed, there's justice in it. And every khabar, every information, and every news that Allah has given us, we will say it is true. Abrogation does not fall in the khabar. Abrogation for a ruling to be uplifted or a verse to be abrogated, it can only fall into a khabar. Or, uh, sorry, a hukum. A hukum is the only thing that is abrogated. Okay? A ruling is the only thing that can be abrogated. Whereas a, in, a news, if it's abrogated, it's a lie. Somebody says to you yesterday, I came to your house. And then later he says to you, I abrogate that. It's that you're lying. So Allah's characteristics, they are akhbar. Are you with me? And from the akhbar, ahkam are taken from it. Ahkam are taken from it. Then the shaykh went on to say it. ثُمَّ رُسُلُهُ صَادِقُونَ مُصَدَّقُونَ بِخِلَافِ الَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ عَلَيْهِ مَا لَا يَعْلَمُونَ after the Shaykh has spoken about and has told us that Allah is the one who knows himself the most, he also is the one that knows his creation more than they know themselves. And once he's already told us that Allah's speech is the most truthfulness, the, the, the most the, 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 the truest speech there is, and that his speech is the best of speeches, he's now telling us that the messengers, thumma rusuluhu, the word thumma is atf. And this atf is connected to the speech of فَإِنَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِنَفْسِهِ That the shaykh has previously mentioned. Are you with me? ثُمَّ رُسُولُهُ His messengers. صَادِقُونَ They are truthful. They are very truthful. Trustworthy. Sitq in the Arabic language, it means مُطَابَقَةُ الْخَبَرِ لِلْوَاقِعِ In the Arabic language, Sidq means mutabakatu al khabari lil waqi'. It is, the word Sidq in the Arabic language is when the statement that you have said or the information that you have given or the news that you said it goes in agreement with the reality. 
or with the situation. So here, what do you realize as well? If a person says a statement and it doesn't go according to the reality out there, this is called what? A lie. It's called a kidib. Are you with me? So it doesn't matter whether you meant it deliberately or whether it was by accident. According to the Arabic language, both of them is a lie. Both of them is a what lie. According to the Arabic definition, that's a lie. Whether you meant it deliberately or whether you did it by mistake and that's what you thought. To them, they consider both of them a lie. And that is why you sometimes find the Sahabas or you would find the Prophet Sallallahu say, say, said about the companion, كَذَبَ Abu Sanabil. Abu Sanabil said a lie. Or Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha wa an abiha. May Allah be pleased with her and her father. Aisha sometimes would say about a companion who said something, كَذَبَ He lied. Al-Imam ibn Adi, there's a book called Al-Kamil. There's a book called Al-Kamil. And if you look at the Muqaddimah, the introduction, he chapters places where the Sahabas, the Aimatul Hadith, saying that this person lied. The lying here, it means Adamu Mutabakat al Khabari al Waka, which is the opposite of what? A Sidq, which is Mutabakat al Khabari al Waka. Good. ثُمَّ رُسُلُهُ صَادِقُونَ مُصَدَّقُونَ The messengers are truthful. Meaning whatever they say, it is in accordance to the reality out there. So they're truthful. صَادِقُونَ They're truthful. Truthful in everything that they have told us about Allah Taala. The prophets and the messengers are truthful in everything that they told us about Allah. They are also what? مُصَدَّقُونَ And we and they are considered to be truthful. They are believed in. And they are truthful about what they brought. What they say is the truth. And they also, the thing that they are transmitting is also truthful. That they, were, they received all this from an authentic source. Nothing is a lie. They got it from who? They got it from the angel, and, the, and this was from who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the shaykh went on to say, بِخِلَافِ الَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ عَلَيْهِ مَا لَا عَلَمُونَ This is in opposition to what? It's in opposition to those who say that which they have no knowledge of. The, prophet, the, the, the prophets are not like that, and Allah is not like that. Everything which Allah has told us subhanahu wa ta'ala about himself. We know he knows him more than we know him. He knows himself more than we know him. So we have to take it. And everything that the messengers have told us about Allah, we take it from them because they are truthful in it. But the people who are speaking without knowledge, they are not on the path of the messengers and the prophets. Who speak about Allah's names and attributes. Based on what? بِمُجَرَّدِ ظُنُونِهِمْ وَتَخَيُّلَاتِهِمْ أَوْ مَا يَتَلَقَّوْنُهُ مِنَ الشَّيَاطِينِ أَمَا عَنِ الشَّيَاطِينِ Those who base their what? They base their knowledge upon mere assumptions and speculations. Or that which they receive from shaytan. Like the innovators. And the Zanadiqa, and the Sahara, and the Kuhan, and the Munajjimeen, the Ulama is Su. All of those. Some people they receive their knowledge from evil scholars who tell them that these characteristics of Allah should be negated when Allah has affirmed it for Himself. Some of them, the Shayateen, have brought this to them, and etc. And the shayateen, shaytan, 
it has a group of people it sends its and uh, its batil and its evil to as allah said in surah al-shu'ara allah says hal unabbi'ukum ala man tanazzal ash-shayatin hal unabbi'ukum ala man tanazzal ash-shayatin tanazzalu ala kulli affakin athim yulqun as-sam'a wa aktharuhum kadhibun and allah also said in surah al-baqarah fawailun lilladhina yaktumuna fawailun lilladhina yaktumuna al-kitaba bi aydihim thumma yaquluna hadha min 'indi allah so if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows himself more than anyone and he's the most truthful one in his speech and he's the best his speech is the best of speeches and his messengers are all truthful in that which they inform us of and that all that which they are saying is a revelation in which they have received from Allah then what is upon us is وجب التعويل اذا اذا على ما قاله الله ورسوله which he refer back to then that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and that which his messengers say especially لا سيما في باب الاسماء والصفات نفيا واثباتا especially in the chapters of Allah's names and attributes whether we're affirming something or whether 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 we are negating a characteristics 